KSMQ Public Television, Austin, Rochester, Mason City. Today, we are speaking with Sarah Berry, Public Health Director at Wasika County, to get the latest on the COVID-19 outbreak. Hi, Sarah. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation, Eric. You bet. Uh, in the press reports, Wasika County for a long time had was hanging steady with four cases. What is the status, the situation this week? Sure, this week we are at 16 cases. We've seen an increase across our community um, from various ages, various backgrounds, and from various employments. So we are seeing an increase in testing and that's the um, reason that we see increased number in cases. It really um, is uh, indicative of the fact that we can more, more easily get tested um, rather than an, an um, point source concern. And it might be important now that the tests are very slowly becoming more available, just let us know, do we, the rules were that if you have the symptoms go in to get, is that still the case as far as should I, or how, how do we determine if we should go in? If, is it still if you have the, the symptoms? Certainly, if you're having a fever and a cough or shortness of breath, um, and it's not emergency, so you're able to manage, you should call your provider. Your provider will work through whether or not they feel like your symptoms might be COVID, and then they will indicate where you would um, arrive for testing. A lot of the COVID test sites are not in a, a clinic, so they're a drive up test site or something removed so that they're reducing the chances of spread within their facilities. Um, you should certainly uh, go in for a test, call ahead and, and arrive for a test if you are having symptoms. Of course, any emergent matter, um, it's never a bad idea to call ahead, but certainly don't delay getting um, treated for any kind of an emergency situation. Um, we, we're, are, we have a growing concern that people are, are scared or concerned that by arriving to a medical provider, they might be putting themselves at risk for getting COVID. And we know that our medical providers are doing a great job of keeping um, folks as separated as possible and um, treating those that need treatment. So please, uh, we would urge our communities to continue to seek medical attention when they need it for any reason. And I think it's important to reinforce that one of the reasons that we are getting a handle on this is that we have professionals such as yourself in these positions. You know, it's easy to overlook it. And, and there's some out there who are just thinking this is just a natural, the, the reason that the curve is flat and it just, uh, just averages or that, that it's because there's been this public awareness and information being given out by counties all over the state from departments like yours, isn't that correct? We do try very hard to reach all of our community, and it's certainly a challenge, as you know. Uh, not everyone listens to this station. Not everyone listens to the radio. So one of the challenges we have faced in public health is getting um, the right information to the right people in a place that they can find it. Uh, so uh, we have found uh, talents we didn't know we had in relation to um, getting information to to people uh, we have a virtual presence here at Waseca County Public Health that's brand new uh, it's been interesting to learn and uh, reach out in that manner but we also know that we have populations that aren't using virtual platforms um, and are still very connected to the traditional sources of media and so uh, we do try and, and reach out with all of that information and it's a lot of information it's a challenge to make it accessible and understandable when it continues to change. And I know here we're, uh, we're located in Austin and I know that in Mower County, uh, the different languages that are spoken, lots of counties around Olmstead County, I think at the high school in Austin, there's 52 different first languages. So there's that whole barrier really to getting information out. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've identified in many different um, exercises over the years, what are our barriers or our biggest challenges? And, and every time, our one of our biggest challenges is language barrier. How do we reach 
um, people who don't use the same connections that we use um, every day and what are, are the connections that they need to have and, and are, where are they looking for their information? How do we, how do we get where they're looking uh, so that we can be, be the most protective of everyone's health? It's our goal at public health to assist all of the residents of our community, uh, no matter their background or language. And um, we try our hardest, but it is, a, it is certainly a challenge. Um, I, this next question is not scientific, so I'm warning you in advance. Um, but I've been asking folks just anecdotally about face mask usage. Uh, from what I see, shopping and so on around, my unofficial is about 60-40, with 60 wearing them 40, but some days it's more like 50-50. What are you seeing in, in your travels around the county there? Well, I actually don't get out much. Uh, <laughs> I'm rather busy, but uh, I have made a couple of uh, trips to get some essential items. And I'd say that's pretty well on. It, it seems to vary based um, on my experience, based on where you are and um, in what setting. So if I stop at my local convenience store for gasoline and, and um, some items, I will see much lower use of face masks in that setting where we feel more comfortable, where we don't anticipate a crowd. Um, but uh, when we go to a larger setting, maybe for groceries, uh, then I think I see, it seems to me, I see a few more people who are um, concerned about that incidental contact and are wearing their, their face masks. And um, I would just uh, urge people to realize that it's not really about how big the place is that we're going, but how, how close we're going to end up next to people. And that really doesn't change in those two settings. Um, there's more people at a larger store, but there's similarly a full house at a convenience store, depending on what time you're there. And um, six feet coming and going from a, a one in, one out, very close to each other is, is the same as um, being in line in the aisle at the grocery store. We're getting the comments uh, today from Sarah Berry. Sarah is public health director of Waseca County here on KSMQ Public Television. Also reading a report from an epidemiologist posted just a couple of days ago that in some of those public places like grocery stores or convenience stores, parts of the buildings are more uh, likely to have it like the restrooms of convenience stores like that, there you should really be careful uh, just because the possibility of having the virus around is greater. So anytime you're going to touch a frequently used object, those are the times that we're gonna increase the chances that we might take something with us or leave something behind. And uh, we do use face masks to protect the people around us. But um, when we think about how we touch the handles on the door or the faucets in the restroom, those are times when we might um, not only leave something behind, but also take something with us. So super important when we leave those facilities or when we arrive home that we wash our hands as one of our first steps. And then we maybe would put our groceries away or put our items away that we purchased and then, and then wash again um, because we now transferred all of the things that we brought in from the house onto our hands again. Um, and it's um, important even when we're in our own homes and in our workplaces, if we're um, able to go to work right now, to wash before we eat or before we touch our face. Um, it's the, the best way. And certainly um, my grandma knew it and it hasn't changed. It's the best way to prevent ourselves from getting sick. Good information there. Finally, uh, there's been emphasis from the state, the Department of Health about food processing facilities. I know in our region, that's a big concern. Uh, Wasika has bird's eye foods, uh, vegetables. That's a little different situation right now, isn't it? That's correct. Our, um, our industry in Wasika County is varied. We do, it does include bird's eye processing. I have talked to a number of our business um, partners and they are all very, very concerned about keeping their business operational and about taking care of their employees. So they're all, um, every single one of them that I've talked to has taken measures to reduce the chances of one 
uh, employee making a lot of other employees sick, um, doing lots of screening before they come in, screening as they arrive, screening, um, and then uh, conversations about how to protect them once they're there. What are the barriers they might need to add or um, spacing they might, might need to increase as they're able in their businesses. So it's our business owners are fabulous, fabulous people who are doing a great job of protecting their employees. If somebody in the county is a Wasika County watching this and they have other questions, would you first direct them to your website or do you want them to call you or uh, so another resource? Of course, they can come to the KSMQ website. We have some resources there, but for Wasika County folks, why don't you let us know what that information is? Sure, uh, we do have a website that we keep up to date. It's uh, a lot of links uh, that we find to be trusted. So you can certainly look on our website for those um, trusted sources. We additionally post to Facebook, uh, Waseca County Public Health Facebook page, some regular updates. Um, we are also able to take phone calls. So if you don't find the information you're looking for, you can reach us at 835-0685. We also have an essential needs request line. So if we have uh, listeners who are symptomatic and are not able because of their symptoms to get out, um, we would ask anyone without, with symptoms to not be going out in the public. If you're short on essential needs, groceries, um, to give a call to our essential needs request line, 507-835-0690. And we also have a great uh, partnership with Lead for Minnesota. Uh, leadforminnesota.org has a community outreach arm for Wasika residents and they are able to match people with volunteers to help with those items as well. Well, we'll put those numbers and those links up on the screen and I uh, really appreciate your time and your service, Sarah. I hope you're keeping healthy along with your staff with all this great, the schedules must be just horrific. It's certainly a busy time in public health, but we're very happy to be helping our community in this time of need. Great. Uh, well, that's Sarah Berry. Thank you very much for joining us. Sarah is Public Health Director of Wasika County. That'll do it for our special report right now from KSMQ Public Television. I'm Eric Olson. See you again soon. <music>